Hi, this is Danelle Flanders with Paper Tray Ink, and today I'm here with a little tutorial on um, using Paper Tray Ink's pa uh, paper clay. And I'm going to make some rolled dough designs with the paper clay, and there's so many different things you can do with it. Um, today I'm going to focus on buttons, but you could use pretty much any of the Paper Tray Ink dies to um, make your own embellishments for cards or any type of project. For this project, you'll need a die cutting machine, the die of your choice, and I'm working with the buttoned up dies by Paper Tree Ink. Um, there's a cute scallop and then a straight button. Uh, you, you'll need freezer paper or wax paper so the clay won't stick to your plates when you're running it through your machine. Um, a spatula will come in handy and a rolling pin. Um, I snuck this from my daughter's little food basket, or the kitchen that she always plays with. <laughs> um, and then you'll need your paper clay, and I am working with the D-Lite paper clay. I just found that this one dries a lot faster and it was easier to work with than the Creative paper clay. Uh, the Creative paper clay was a little bit more wet and took a lot longer to dry. Okay, so the first thing I did was take a little bit of the freezer paper and tape it down to my work surface with some washi tape. Um, this just keeps your mat clean and the uh, paper clay won't stick to it. So you'll take a little piece of the paper clay. Um, if you want to use your spatula to flatten it out a little bit, it works well. And then you can use your rolling pin to smooth it out and you want to get it as thin as you can because when you run it through the cuddle bug um, these dies are so thin that it's really going to spread your clay out so you want to just try to get it thin before you start plus the thinner it is the quicker it will dry for you so you just want to roll it out and get it smooth and then you can either let this dry for uh, it says one to three days um, but I don't like to wait that long, so I popped it in the microwave for about 10 to 15 seconds. And when it was in the microwave, it did poof up a little bit, so when I took it out, I smoothed it back out again with my rolling pin. And then I let it dry for about a half an hour. Um, when it's dry, it'll look something like this. And the next thing you're going to do is take your cuddle buck. Let me move this out of the way here. Um, you'll need two pieces of freezer paper and you'll put the clay in between the two waxy sides and you'll put your die right over the top. You'll sandwich that right in between and run it through your machine. Okay, so when you take it out of the cuddle bug, um, you'll see that you can pop the buttons right out. And then, find my stylus here. You can just use a little stylus to poke the holes for the buttons. And voila, some cute little buttons. Now these can be painted with mists, um, the reinkers. Um, you can stamp designs on them. Uh, there's um, another idea I have. I'll show you here. You can emboss the clay before you cut the buttons out. So this was made with the Background Basics Hound's Tooth. This one is Background Basics Text, uh, Circles, and the Wood Green. So there's so many different things you can do with it. Let me show you some of my finished samples. Okay, I'd like to share a few of my finished button designs with you. Um, the first one there, I used a button with ultra-fine Prisma glitter on top for the center of my snowflake embellishment. I cut a damask snowflake die for the background. The middle is cut out of felt with the lovely layers dies, and then I topped it with my button. Makes a cute little embellishment for a card or a project. The second row was done with the Background Basics uh, Houndstooth stamps. And the first one I just stamped the button. 
The second two are actually embossed with the stamp set, and what that means is I took the clay when it was wet, stamped the hound's tooth into it to um, emboss or deboss, I guess you could say, and then I let it dry and cut the buttons out after the clay was dry. You definitely don't want to put it through your machine when the clay is wet because it's just a mess and it sticks to everything. So make sure it's very dry before you run them through. These two buttons were stamped with Background Basics Newsprint. I love how those look. The next row were stamped with the Button Boutique stamp set. The two Aqua Mist ones there, um, the large one was just painted in with an Aqua Mist refill ink and I just kind of mixed it with water and a paintbrush and painted it on after the button was dry. The background, the little, or the little button in the back there, that one was just rubbed over the top with the Aqua Mist stamp pad just to color it in a little bit. Um, the next row was stamped with Background Basics Wood Green. Uh, the first one was just stamped. The second one, I colored the button in first with Classic Craft ink pad, and then I stamped over the top with dark chocolate. The third one, um, I used the embossing technique where you just stamp into the clay when it was wet with the wood grain set, and then the button was actually too thick to run through my machine, so I just trimmed it out with a craft knife and made a little squarish button. The little heart button there, was embossed when it was wet with the Bountiful Banners heart. Um, and then I just kind of tore around it after it was dry for a fun little look. The two larger buttons right there are stamped with Button Up. They fit just perfectly with that stamp set. And then the little buttons on the end, those were stamped with the Bitty Background Blocks too. Um, that set has a lot of smaller patterns which work great for this uh, design because the buttons are a smaller size so the smaller patterns work really great. So that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed this technique and I can't wait to see what you'll make with it. Enjoy the rest of your stamp affair. Thanks for watching. Bye.